Hi there ladies and gentlemen back to another episode and here I have come to Vasco and behind me you can see the beautiful St Andrews church uh, in this particular episode I'm going to bring to you a heritage which is not directly related to Goa but this is related to an incident that happened in Goa two years six months and nine days before liberation and this is related to this church and to its symmetry it so happened that a dutch plane that was traveling from new guinea to holland in the year 1959 due to bad weather or for whatever other reasons on 10th of June 1959 crashed when it was landing and that is how this church got related to that particular incident so as we go let us see what are the incidents that happened in relation to this plane that crashed and brought us in international contact with the Dutch On 10th of June 1959, a Dutch plane crashed and like I told you, they were all, the victims were all laid to rest at the St. Andrew's Church at Vasco. But once the dear departed are laid to rest and as the time passes, we find very few people who have that passion, the, the love for their near and dear ones. And it is very nice when even after 60 years, one of the family member comes down to pay the respect and then the entire Goa, okay, a small community gets together to pay respect. But ladies and gentlemen, let us find out from one of the victim's son, Mr. Richard Gebler, who is here in Goa, let us hear from him why he has come down here, what he knows about this, and what light he can shed on this. Mr. Gebler, our Hello. sympathies to you for you uh, this tragedy. Um, you have come all the way from Holland over here. Yes. Can you tell us something about this uh well 60 years uh, that's about a lifetime uh, in the old days you would not get so very old maybe 17 or 70 or so so I felt it was my duty to come back here after 60 years and I'm now 65 I don't know how long I will live how long I will be healthy so you must do it when you feel it's right that's why I do it you come over here okay now this particular plane uh, left from some place yes it left from uh, New Guinea from Biak okay. and it was heading back home in the Netherlands but normally such a flight would take 10 12 days uh, the engine itself uh, the the the, mode, uh, the plane itself uh, had already its its problems uh, what type of plane was it, it was Martin Berner PBM 5A official okay. The A stands for amphibian, okay. so this plane could land on water and could land on land. On, on land. Yes, okay. but uh, it was a second-hand plane bought from the U.S. Navy, and it needed a lot of maintenance. Uh, but the maintenance could not be done all at New Guinea. So for big maintenance, they had to fly back home. As I okay. said, 10, 12 days. Yes. So uh, they they took off and uh, heading for Holland and after uh, two days they already stranded in Colombo where they had some minor uh, repairs to the engine but then they headed for the next stop but uh, suddenly there were some problems and uh, one of the engines uh, broke down and they had to force land on one engine 
and uh, well visibility was not too good uh, the aircraft was too heavy loaded and uh, yes that was a problem so it was instable and to to um, to properly land was difficult so they decided to do uh, an emergency landing only not knowing that there are some several uh, small border walls so the the undercarriage of the the plane hit one of the walls it turned over exploded in pieces uh, what is your father's name? My father's name is Constantine Nicolaas Gabeler. He was called Nico. That was his name. Yeah, name. His crew yeah. name. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, his crew name. And what was he doing on the plane? Uh, he was a wireless operator. Okay. So he was uh, having the contact between the plane and, and the ground stations. So you have you have given us the the transcript yes. of that. Yes. That was the last. Uh, that was the transcript of the last uh, communications between the ground station and the plane. And uh, it's very odd to 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 read your uh, your father's um, words and yes. you know, and to see that there was also a bad communication. You know. True. At the time that this accident took place, what was your age? Five and a half. And in your family, whom do you have? I had uh, an older sister. She was about seven or eight. And I had a younger sister of eight months. Of eight months? Yes. Uh, your mother is still there? My mother is still alive. She's now, she will become 91. Sure. She lives with me. Yes, so she's been, uh, when the accident happened, she got a widow and she well, she, she said, okay, I must go on. And my biggest aim is to raise the kids and see that they grow up. She okay. never got married or so, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when, you, uh, when I met you, you were wearing this cap. Yes. And there is an insignia on this cap. Can yes. you tell us something more yes. about this insignia? Uh, this insignia is uh, of the Marine Luchtvaartdienst, the MLD. That's uh, the, 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 the Marine Air Corps. That's where my father flew for. Okay, so this is the Dutch... Uh, Dutch Naval uh, Air okay. Service, yes. Uh, today there was a little service that we had over here. Yes. In memory of this. Yes. So this, uh, this 2019 is the 60th year. Yes, yes, okay. that's fine, yeah. Um, what were your feelings over there when you had people, you know, who came up to... Uh, I didn't uh, expect so many people and I was really astonished by, by the number of people and, uh, and as you could see by the age of the people it were all people who were around that time and also here we, we heard some uh, eyewitnesses who really could remember what happened and it's so incredible that those people still know what was going on so yes I'm, I'm very happy I'm f yes so you have plans to come back to Goa with your uh, family? You never know. Uh, this year, the 10th of June, we have our national celebration at Roermond. There I will meet all the people and we can have, we can make plans and we'll see how so it goes. So you can make plans? We can always make plans. <laughs> That's very nice. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. And uh, we are very happy that you have expressed and you explained your uh, love Mm -hmm. for parents and yes. I am sure that this message that we should remember our parents till the time that we can yes. is passed on to my viewers. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Have thank you very much. Journey. Thank you. Thank you.
So when you come here to this St. Andrew's Church in Vasco, in the cemetery, you find this monument over here. Now it has got writings that we can't understand because this is written in Dutch. And the main reason why these are here is because this is a memorial to the eight personnel who died over here, like I have told you. And their photographs are put here. And this is the last photograph that they clicked. This happened on 10th of June 1959 at the old airport, not the present airport. So what we will do is we will try and understand what actually happened in this particular case. But whenever you are in Vasco, please come drop in because this is our link, Goa's link of the past to Holland. And ladies and gentlemen, this happened exactly two years, six months and nine days before Goa got liberated. See, I was telling you about this. These are the graves of those eight Dutch aviators who met with a very fatal accident at our Vasco. This is one of the transfiguration for us. 
recall what is good in others to see, to remember, to have that attachment for our dear ones, to let them trust, to remember them with appreciation and the content for this gift which are being given to us, to have this attachment for his father, who he young age, he left him still to have this attachment. So let us pray all those family members living in that God may bless them. Those who went before us, they may experience the glorification, the transfiguration, not only of souls, but of their body at the end of the day. And as we prepare ourselves for this focus to me, let us acknowledge that we have seen us before God and men. Everyone wants to know that when a plane crashes, what happened in the few moments before it has crashed. We all know that this plane crashed when it was landing. But here we have with us Mr. Agnello Tellis from Vasco and he has got something to tell us. Agnello Bob, welcome to my program, My Going. Can you please tell us those few moments just before the plane came and then it crashed. What were you doing and all? Yeah, I, I live in Mangor Hill okay. and down there is a small lake, okay. you see. And then as usual, I went fishing and I saw a big noise and a big plane with little smoke over it, very low, which usually doesn't come on that side, Butebat side. Okay. It was the type transport Portuguese always used to land from Surawer. Okay. So I said, what this, what's happening? And the noise was so huge, and I saw a little smoke, and it, after three, one minute, it just stopped. That's many, many years. I was a very young man, but that memory is still alive in me. That noise and that, uh, that picture of that plane, you know. Thank yeah. you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. Much. We met Miss Electra Lobo E. Ribello and she has seen and let us see through her eyes and hear what she has to tell us. Ma'am, welcome to my program called as My Goye and uh, you, have, you have seen the accident when it happened because over here. Yes, because it hardly took my brother and myself about 10 to 15 minutes to run up. Where were you staying? We were staying in Down Mangor. You were staying in Down Mangor? Down Mangor. Okay. And we ran up the hill near Maxi Pereira's house. Okay. That was the first house there. So we ran up the hill by the side of his house and we arrived on the road next to the which now 
has the gurudwara okay that time there was What no was your age? i was uh, almost 14 You're 13 14, 14 okay. yeah so we heard that thundering noise and we looked up we heard that sound like a bomb blast da and we ran up in the direction of the smoke so within 15 minutes we were up there on the hill and there was not a single zopri nor a house nothing it was an open area it was a rocky area and the plane had crashed beyond that on the open space closer to the runway closer to the present era uh, yeah that runway was on the side and this plane crashed on okay. in line okay okay like maybe an angle so it did not come in line with the runway it no it came it side. came from Vasco at side. an angle okay okay yeah at an angle did you see any When uh, we reached there, the plane was already in fires, and the debris were there, and some uh, like bodies. They could not be recognized, but they looked like bodies. But one person walked out from there, and he walked upright. Was there any more people? No. I uh, we didn't see anybody else except for the burning of the aircraft and then afterwards the Portuguese and we didn't know also how many were there at that moment but this one person short stout in khaki uniform walked and was coming towards us when the portuguese full uh, ambulance and the fire brigade Emergency and service. everybody came from the airport side no from the right hand side not airport side from this road they came oh. here by this road okay, okay. from mangor okay. and they came and cordoned off the area so we were out and what they did to that person nobody knows because that time the health office was at the municipal building on the ground floor Marma Goa Municipal. So like hospital. Yeah, that and Dr. Jai Malmeda from Mangor. He also happened to be the health officer there at that time. Yes. That's all. Thank you very much, ma'am. Most you welcome. So Most welcome. Time. So when we came here for the service we found a lady Mrs Sidalia Almeida uh whose father Jaim Almeida Dr Jaim Almeida was the medical officer during the Portuguese time when this crash took place let us find out from her what she has to say ma'am welcome to my program my way so can you please tell us you know what your dad must have told you or what you have seen no i didn't see anything because i was a baby that time okay. but i remember uh, my father telling me that this scratch happened and uh, that uh, all of them were killed and that he was called and my mother even told me you were small she says i left you there and we all ran over there to see Maybe this scratch we were staying here in mangor you were staying in, in mangor. mangor yes okay. yeah what could have been your age Uh, I must have been about two or two to two three. Or yeah, yeah. Okay. I used to hear a lot of stories because every time there was a function in our house, they used to talk about this crash. Okay. But definitely, my father has spoken to me about this crash, and he said, you know, it was very sad. All of them were killed. He said, and uh, he says he went there, you know, to examine all the bodies and all that over there and declare them dead. And uh, so these these stories I have heard, but I have personally not witnessed. Okay. Yeah. Whenever there was any other crash happened anywhere in India, they used to talk this about. The, yeah, they used to speak about okay. crash. And that's why I came for the mass today. I said, you know, my father was involved as a doctor for in this crash, yes. so I thought. I should be there for the mass Very which was being held Very for us. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Here we met Mr. Antonio Patricino Valles. What did I you I have seen on that day same day that this thing is burning over there and uh, all this like a fume. Mm. Yeah. This is Where were you? when we heard this the in this holland plane 
Holland is plain at Dino. We ran or do anything. Okay. Boys and okay, okay. Yeah. What time was it? This uh, time uh, was about 11.30 or 11, 11. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Because so, so you saw this? Yeah, plane. yeah. So I saw only the part of this back, that shepherdy. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tail. Yeah, the tail. Yeah. And I brought afterwards a small piece of um, plastic okay. to make a cross. Okay, there. from there. Yeah, from there. But I did not done it. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Bob. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah, your yeah. time. Yeah. The plane crashed. There were victims. But there was somebody who saw something a little different. And this gentleman, Mr. Eugenio Ribello, from Vasco has something to tell us. Ishini Bob, welcome to my program, My Goye. Uh, after this plane crashed on the 10th of June, 1959, um, they were taken to a hospital and you saw something that is different from what everybody has saw. Can you tell us? I wouldn't say it's in a hospital, but it was a medical facility. Okay. On the first floor of the med Murmugao Municipal Council building, then known as the Kamara Municipal of the Murmugao. From my balcony on the first floor, I saw a couple of vehicles coming. And from one vehicle, a man came. And did, he was not an ordinary passenger. And I am given to understand, and I am confirmed that he was one of the survivors of the air crash. Mm -hmm. Now, he got down by himself on that vehicle, which was a jeep. And then... He, there is a, a corridor for that building about two meters. From my corner, I saw him walking those two meters and going towards the staircase of the municipal building. So he walked? He walked. He walked like a normal person, not even like an injured person. Okay. Alive and mobile. Alive and mobile. Mobile. Okay. So, thank you very much, Mr. Bello, for ending it. Thank you, sir.
So here we are at the end of this episode of the Dutch air crash of June 1959. A bond created between the people of Goa and Holland through the heart. This may not be an episode of the normal type, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you liked it. And if you have, please do write to us on the email that you get over here. We love to hear from you. Till we meet again for the next episode.